Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we are continuing on with our VGC Series 11 content. We have a team based all around Xerneas and Metagross. The team has been provided by NG VGC, who is an Indonesian VGC player, very good player, and tweet out last week the team and another one that they've had a lot of success with on the ladder. Now, I saw the Xerneas and it's something that we don't see commonly used really too much in the format at the minute but something i do feel like has a definite place up there and can do a good job obviously alongside that you got the metagross there and there have been a lot of comments recently on the videos that we've been putting up about metagross so it's nice to be able to actually feature it you can see it's got a couple of options to kind of proc that weakness policy on it through the anti or the tornadoes with a brutal swing of bulldoze respectively the team also has rotom and amoongus so nice support and cast there the the rotom gives you really nice kind of synergy for the Xerneas against steel type threats that you would have there and obviously with the Metagross as well for the fire and the ground with the levitate and water typing. Uh, Amoongus gives you the redirection and gives you a check in trick room if that does become a bit of an issue. There is also a Pokepist down in the description as well that NG has provided. His socials will all be linked down below if you'd like to, to jump over and check him out and uh, drop him a follow over on Twitter. I would definitely recommend it. Always providing really cool innovative teams that are a little bit different in formats that are always successful so sit back friends hope you enjoyed today's episode as always we'll have a couple of games with the team and then we'll feature the rental at the end so without further ado let's get into game one of today's episode okay first up we have a zashian thunderous landorus grimsnarl rotom heat and araquanid team pretty kind of standard looking zashian team until you get to the rotom heat and araquanid now rotom heat going to be a really good utility good synergy with the zashian has that ground immunity um, and can switch in on things that are going to threaten Zashian pretty good. It's a little bit like Rotom, obviously just gives you that fire type and stab. And then the Araquanid's a really nice option. It gives you a trick room check if you need it. It can also play off like the speed control options on the team from Scary Face, Thunder Wave and Airstream from both the Genies. Uh, if needed but as i say it does give you a trick room check if needed as well so you kind of need metagross and xerneas here like xerneas to deal with like half the team and then metagross to deal with the others and then you're going to need to kind of pin in rotom as well to kind of help out with the rotom heat and the araquanid that the other two members of the team can't deal with super well like i feel like entai do we want to go metagross as a lead metagross Rotom and then Xerneas. I think the big thing is like Xerneas is kind of freed up if we can get rid of the Zashian. But Zashian not that easy to deal with, especially in a team where you haven't got Intimidate, you haven't got that way to kind of like just get rid of those Intrepid Sword boosts um, initially, just with the switch in, you know? Um, it does become a little bit more tricky. With something like Entai, you have to kind of utilize it a little bit or well, as best as you can, really. Um, so, Rotom Heat coming in uh, with the Grim Snow. I think we probably want to just go after the Grim Snow here. Uh, we'll go Sacred Fire and then we'll switch into Rotom to take potentially a Max Flare or an Overheat from this Rotom. The only issue here would be if the Rotom goes Nasty Plot, expecting us to maybe Snarl in this situation, which could put it a little bit out of reach and then it becomes way more threatening to our side of the field. Rotom actually just going for the Protect here. It'll be interesting to see what the Grimmsnarl goes for. Uh, it goes for the trick. It's going to go for the trick onto the Rotom to try and get rid of a potential weakness policy there. Um, and give Rotom the lag and tail, which isn't ideal. It gets itself a citrus berry for its troubles. Uh, and no burn there, so that's not great. But we do have the option now where we can go for another Sacred Fire. And we could use this turn to go for maybe just a Hydro Pump rather than waste the turn going for... Um, something like a nasty plot. It's just like, what has my opponent got to switch in to take? I mean, they've got the Araquanid, right? So they could bring Araquanid in here, but then again, if they bring Araquanid in, it's not really going to have the best of times the next turn having to deal with something like uh, Thunderbolt. Thunderous coming in, so I don't mind that too much. Thunderous not going to enjoy taking a Hydro Pump. We may see screens from the Grim Snarl here. No screens there. Um, and we get a high roll, so we actually take down the Grimstone, which is pretty huge. So it must have been a low roll that previous turn um, as we get the Hydro Pump into the Thunderous. Um, and we can get some nice damage onto it there. So that's that's pretty good for us. A good start, at least. Um, Thunderous probably in... Yeah, Zashin coming in now. Okay. 
I wonder if we're in a position where we could maybe try and maneuver to get like something like Metagross in. Um, probably have to concentrate a little bit more down on something like Zash in here with a Sacred Fire. Sacred Fire and Thunderbolt going to be enough? I don't know because we might see Eerie Impulse as well come out. We're just better off going for a Hydro Pump just to get as much damage as possible onto the Zashin, I think. Oh, you see a far play. Let's see Entai. So they're doubling down into the Entai. Gun Sacred Sword. Should take it. Yeah. So we might be able to get the burn here. If we do, that's huge for us. Like, massive. Massive. We get the burn. Okay. It might not matter too much if this Hydro Pump connects. Which it does. Is this going to be enough? And then with Zashin down, like I said, yeah, yeah, okay. So the burn doesn't really matter there at all. It was just a nice added bonus to kind of cover things in case that Hydro Pump did miss. But um, we're in a great position now where we can, yeah, I mean, they still have access to their max moves for sure. But I think we got Sacred Fire into Thunderous because if they go after the Rotom, if they chase down the Rotom here, then... I kind of get punished for it. I think Xenius isn't going to have the easiest time against the Rotom. It's whether or not we want a nasty plot here or go for a... I think we may be better going for a nasty plot. It's just if they max this turning or max lightning into our Rotom, we don't have... Um, we could max Rotom as well. I think max and Rotom is probably the best thing to do, to be honest. It allows us to take attacks better. It gets the rain up on the field, which then protects Metagross that little bit better when it does hit the field inevitably. Um, Rotom is going to go after the Entai as well, so we're not really weakening our Sacred Fire into that Thunderous. So it's just where they decide, like, do they go after the Entai here to get rid of it? Or do they go for the Eerie Impulse into Rotom to check a potential nasty plot? Well, I'm just going to protect, so that gives us a little bit of extra room, I guess. And I think they just, they're going wild charge. Yeah, into Entai. Cover any switches in, so. That's not too bad. I don't mind this too much at all, because I think now we can. <clears throat> guys are here. We guys are the next turn into the Thunderous. We, we bring in Xerneas. We protect Xerneas. We guys are into the Thunderous. And hopefully a geyser even at minus two should be enough to get the, the thunderous. Actually, we know it's not got e impulse. So it's, um, yeah, we've got no way to uh, to be weakened here. It is the Defiant variant. Um, so we could really just go for a, a Geomancy here if we wanted. Or we could pull a hard switch into something like Metagross. Because I think... Yeah, I think them. Yeah, I think Metagross isn't a bad option, and then we go Max Lightning into Thunderous here. Yeah, because I think they go probably Max Flare if anything that turn with the Rotom potentially. I don't know, but uh, we kind of get a good start and pick off the Zashin at a point in that game where it makes it really like difficult for my opponent to kind of come back from and have that that support in the back. So get a nice win there for us to kick off with, and uh, we'll jump straight into game two. Okay, next up today we have a Kyogre Raichu Mantine. Entai, Rillaboom and Slurpuff team. So pretty interesting team. You've got some interesting kind of mechanics going on here with abilities and stuff like that. Obviously the first one to mention is going to be the Slurpuff with that Unburden ability. It's inevitably going to have a grassy seed to take advantage of that speed boost that it gets and then supporting the rest of the team. Rillaboom obviously going to be uh, something that has to be brought if they want to go down that strategy of course. Uh, then you've got the Lightning Rod which supports both the Kyogre and the Mantine from the Raichu. Something else to kind of keep in mind obviously as well they're gonna have nuzzle probably there for a source of speed control it's gonna try and slow things down on our end of the field Mantine, you've got to know, it does have access to support like Wide God as well. So if we do go down a Xerneas route, we're going to have to be mindful that Wide God could potentially come out. And they're going to have things like Entai that are going to be able to soak up those fairy type attacks really well. And also disrupt with things like Snarl. I feel like Rotom is going to be good here. But the problem is getting rid of the Raichu and the Rillaboom. Uh, once they go down, like Rotom has a really good time against this team. So it's being able to remove those two threats first. 
and Raichu and Rillaboom. I mean, we could maybe go Tornadus Metagross route and then go Rotom and then Xerneas. I think might be not a bad play altogether. Let's see if this works out. We're running out of time, so we need to lock in pretty quickly, but that makes a lot of sense for what we're going up against. Let's just see. They're only able to bring four of the six, so they're not going to see everything from them, but uh, hopefully we see the Slurpuff. I don't imagine we will because I think Slurpuff's going to have a bit of a harder time against Metagross as well as that Rillaboom, although the Rillaboom will probably make an appearance here because it does give uh, a lot of support against probably one of the bigger threats on this team which is the Rotom from us so we are going to see the entire lead with that Raichu so in turn one we can just Tailwind I think uh, we've got to watch out for the fake out though which is a big thing from um, the Raichu fake out into Tornadus and try and Tailwind <sighs> the Sacred Fire worries me like to no end Mm. The thing is, can we catch our opponent out by, like, attacking with Metagross and then doubling into Tornadus? Fake out and trying to attack into it. Because that could be the thing. Or do we just max here and go for an attack straight into the Raichu? Um, straight off the bat and just hope that we don't get burnt. It doesn't look like we're going to we'll run out of time. We're just going to protect this turn. So it's kind of a play I did think about. It's just whether or not they double up into Tornadus here, which would be pretty bad or if they cover bases by going into the Metagross with the Sacred Fire anyway, which they do. So that's, uh, that's not too bad. The thing is, that might not actually be the worst thing for us because we could potentially switch into Rotom here from Metagross and preserve Metagross for later on in this game um, and go for like a Tailwind here and then switch into roll to ourselves um and then i guess because what's the right you're gonna do probably maybe vol switch into something we've got to be mindful that we're running out of time here because we probably don't want metagross to stay in and take a sacred fire that's the, that's the big be all and end all of this but rotom isn't going to appreciate getting a burn that's the only thing in that any any sort of residual damage onto it at this stage in the game is not going to be useful for us to kind of close the game up like I say, once the Raichu's gone, if the Rillaboom's not on the back, then Rotom has a really good time against this team. Uh, Sacred Fire coming out and doing a, a big chunk of damage, as you see. Uh, Thunderbolt is just going to be fired into the Tornadus there. Um, but with the Whacking Berry, we are able to take that a little bit better. So, <laughs> but gets the Paralysis, which is not ideal. Not ideal. Not what we really want to be seeing there. I think we probably have to chase down the Raichu here. More than anything, I think we go after it with Hydro Pump and an Air Slash. Because we will outspeed the Raichu with Tornado still, even after the Paralysis. And then hope that the Tornado just gets taken down by Entai. Got to worry about Extreme Speed though. Entai switching out. So we potentially are going to be able to, to get rid of the Raichu here as long as our attacks hit, which is good. And then we do see the Rillaboom hit the field, which is going to be something else that has access to Fake Out. Um, yeah, Hydro Pump hits. There's part A of our plan going well. And the Air Slash should be enough. We're not paralyzed, so that's great. And the Raichu will drop, which is, yeah, a good turn for us, I think. Probably see Kyogre come in now, I think. Which makes it a little bit more difficult for us to kind of get that maneuverability against something like with the Rotom that we want, you know. Um, and we don't really have the switches because if you had something like, potentially had something like Amoongus in the back, that would be ideal to bring in here, you know. Um, the other option we could go down is go Max Airstream. Like, Max Tornadus. And go after Rillaboom here with Max Airstream. It's just if they've got the Cobra Berry, they will survive. It might be better just go on Air Slash and preserving our Max for later on. I think, yeah, that's probably not a bad idea. And then I think. Protect, protect Rotom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just that the the issue is fake out here from the from the Rillaboom, but it's whether or not they want to kind of 
grassy glide. Yeah, they go after tornadoes. Yeah, they take us down anyway. Okay. And thunder coming out. Okay, from the Kyoga. Hmm. Interesting. Now, is it better to bring in Xerneas here? And then switch to Metagross. Or is it better to bring in Metagross? Chase down and keep Xerneas for later on in this game. I think it might be better go on Metagross here. We might have to just sacrifice Rotom this next turn, in all honesty. Just a max guys is gonna absolutely decimate us. That's the only problem. That's the only problem. Max guys is gonna give us uh, so many issues. And I don't think we take a grassy glide from a Rotom, even if we max it. So it's like we have to sacrifice it, really, and go for. I mean, we could change the weather as well, which might actually play into our hands. Go my max hailstorm into the Rillaboom, um, and then just go for a Thunderbolt into Kyogre here. Just if they max the Kyogre, that's going to be the big problem for us. Like they max Kyogre and go max Geyser into Metagross, it's going to make it a bit difficult. But I mean, disrupting the weather is going to be a huge play for us. The other option is obviously bringing in like Xerneas in this situation, trying to change the grassy terrain. But you kind of leave Xerneas open to take a big water type attack anyway. And like the Geomancy might be a win con for us at the, at the end of the game. I'm gonna see the Kyogre protect, which is, which is which is huge, especially if a grassy glide comes out, takes down the Rotom, gives that Metacross a free turn. We get rid of the rain, then we potentially get rid of the the, the Rillaboom, and then we get Xerneas onto the field where we can Geomancy before that Kyogre is able to attack us. We know it's not scarfed. Yeah, that's massive. And we lock in the weather now, so... Well, we lock it in until they max with Kyogre and go max Geyser. But... We can boost our special defense a little bit further with the Metagross if we want. So I think this isn't a terrible, terrible outlay, you know? Uh, the Grassy Train's still in effect on the field, gonna... Heal off all that chip damage that we've taken as our Tailwind does pitter out. But that's that's alright. Uh, get Xerneas on the field and I think Raichu probably comes out for my opponent. Oh no, Entai. Okay. I mean we max. Max quick anyway. The Snarl could be a bit of an issue here, for sure. Sacred Fire as well, because they can now double up into... into Xerneas. Which they probably do, to be honest. But then it, it gives Metagross the room that it needs to kind of maybe be able to get... some defense boosts behind it. And they may be more attracted to go on Sacred Fire into, into Metagross, rather than... Um, into the Xerneas, but it's, it depends what they fear more, the Geomancy going up, I think I'd probably, I'd, it's a difficult situation, I'd probably go after the, the Xerneas if I was my opponent, which may be, you know, maybe hesitant not to protect here with, with our own Xerneas, just to give us a bit of a free turn, where we can get the, um, the Max Quake off, ooh, a Max and Entai, that's something we see too often here, uh, and it might be the better player really, from our opponent. Depends what the Kyogre goes for as well. Probably is going to go for a Water Spout. Max Flare into Meta. Oh no. no. I want to proc that weakness policy. Xerneas taking that pretty well. And now with the Sun up, it kind of counteracts what my opponent's trying to do. Because if they go Water Spout, it's definitely not going to be enough to take down Xerneas, especially after the Geomancy here. And we've got that speed. You know, we've got that speed advantage now. Metagross definitely going to be in a rough position the next turn where. Are we going to be able to take Max Flare in the sun from an Entai? I don't know. I don't know. Max Steel Spike might have been the better play for us, to be honest. Okay, Thunder coming out. Probably that chip is enough. Steel Spike would have been a one. Let's, let's see how much this does. Not a great deal. Not enough anyway. Not enough. Well, they got an option. They got options. I think we still, it depends how what item that uh, Entai's got and where it goes next turn. 
I'd go after the Xerneas because I think maybe two Moonblast gets us. But you leave yourself open to another max. I think we have to Moonblast here into the, um, the entire. I think we just double into it. Paragon protecting, which is fine. Yeah, another Moonblast will get that Entai. So if you don't go after the, the Xerneas here, yeah. You go after the Metagross. Then the Xerneas gets you the next turn. But if you go after, yeah, if you go after the Xerneas here, the Metagross gets you. And then we get that plus two. And the Kyogre with the Sun up is not in a great spot. We've got plus two special defense as well. So we'll be able to close this one up now. Yeah, so we're kind of in that like awkward position where we're not like really loving what's in front of us but we, we're splitting my opponent's like decisions as well and you know what they've kind of done is set the sun up which is very conflicting for what they've got out on the field where metagross is going to be able to close this one up now um although water spot still will sting a little bit for sure uh, but with two plus two special defense we're kind of all right that's the end of our max turns we're relying on uh stomp and tantrum really is our way to to deal with the kyogre so and see how much it does and see how much their water spouts and origin pulses do i mean the sun is giving us a massive advantage here water spout in the sun full power we take that pretty well to be honest take that pretty well um can we out damage them that's the big thing yes we can okay oh okay we get a crit it kind of throws us off a little bit um the grassy terrain ending so our recovery's gone but uh, oh, stompy, stompy. Going to be another two stomps. Can we take two Origin Pulses? Well, they haven't got Origin Pulse. They got Ice Beam. They can't freeze us in, with the Sun Up, so that's a big a big thing for us. They can Thunder us, but then the Sun Up is, well, yeah, really not helping them out. And um, the crit just, I think, makes this just a little bit easier for us. Especially because they're relying on Water Spout as their main kind of attack and move now. they got no way to um, really beat us especially with the sun up that entire play i think well even if they went after the metagross there then the xerneas just dazzles the next turn and kyoga is just not able to deal with us so whatever happened i think we would have been in a good position so metagross really coming through in this in this match uh really nice to see very good game to our opponent and uh, we'll wrap up now friends with the rental code okay friends here is today's rental team big shout out again to ngvgc uh, as i mentioned at the start of the video their socials are down in the description make sure to help them check them out and uh, drop them a follow if you like this team and the sort of teams that they put out i would definitely recommend it um and thank you so much for sharing it it's been a pleasure to feature it on the channel and uh, get to see the team in action metagross has really shone through today i feel and really strong member of the team i had some games with the team off camera as well and really enjoyed it the, the whole concept of the team is uh, really nice to play and obviously from playing rotom last week in a different team you can see it's got some real value in this format as well so if you have a go with the team i hope you have a lot of fun with it friends do leave your comments down below let me know your thoughts on this and uh, we are creeping ever closer to brilliant diamond shining pearl releasing later this week which i'm very excited about so we'll be covering a lot of content from friday onwards with that game so i hope you're looking forward to it but we'll be back later this week with more series 11 content so do keep an eye out for that and we are streaming our inclement emerald run at the minute uh streams most nights so just check out the schedule for live uh streams on the channel and uh if you do you like the sound of that come hang out it is a lot of fun and we're doing all right so hopefully it continues tonight i think it's going to get harder as we go on but at the base of it it is a lot of fun so thanks so much for tuning in friends have a great rest of your day and we'll be back soon with more series 11 content so until then take care and bye bye